Hello fiber friends and welcome to Cabin Fever Crochet. I'm Helene and this is our 2023 Fall Festival with my friend Jay of Jay's Knit and Pearl Jam. This is our third annual welcoming in the new season and giving thanks to all of you for being here. Each year we pick a new theme and each of us designs a project around it. This year's theme is Welcome Home with Home Decor Projects for You, designed with thoughts of hope, love, and peace. I've created one in crochet and Jay's is in knit for those who crochet, knit, or do both. I want to thank those of you who sent in your photos so I could share with everyone here on YouTube stunning picture from Pam in Arkansas and really cute and fun designs by Nadine in Mississippi. There's a timestamp for this tutorial in the drop down description section along with the link to Jay's channel and I've also put her link in the comment section. My design is a confident beginner friendly project due to the post stitches. It can be worked in three different sizes, a more squared version, traditional rectangle, or a more elongated rectangle depending on the surface you're placing it on, whether it be a dining table, a dresser, table runner type for coffee table, counter, or even bookcase. You can use color combinations right from your stash that will cross over into other seasons such as I did here by just changing the other decor around the placemats and a, just different pot and different flowers. Or you can change them all together going into say spring and summer. And maybe you live in a warmer year-round climate or just like going with lighter colors. You can also create your own gradient with leftover yarn like I did here with Lion Brand's Comfy Cotton Fetty. And now it's time to get started with the tutorial. Well, I am sitting outside on an absolutely gorgeous October afternoon. You may hear external sounds, occasional bird chirping, wind chimes, so forth. But let's go over the pattern briefly so you know where we're going with it and as mentioned you can make this in either more of a squared rectangle or a traditional more elongated rectangle. But as I worked up the first one this did take on the more traditional rectangle shape but continue working in the ground in the granny square fashion building our corners as we go it did take on the more squared shape so I worked it out with a really simple change both super easy and that way you have both options so that it will fit say the top of a bookcase that's more rectangle or a larger table and want to go with the more squared version I recommend going with a thread weight yarn up to a light number four weight because the thicker denser yarn you have will add more bulk to this project and items that you may place on it because of the texture of the stitches added to that may not lay flat so keep that in mind when choosing your type of yarn now the yarn I worked up in this and just going through my stash with everything I pulled out this Hobby Lobby Dazzling sadly discontinued now this is a 98% acrylic with the rest metallic so also think about what you are going to be placing on it if there's anything that has heat then I would go with 100% cotton or closest to that because the cotton will absorb the heat without scorching or melting your yarn such as metallic or a synthetic mite or even a more delicate natural fiber. This is a hundred percent plant fiber pulp. I use that for the border and normally when I'm creating projects and combining yarn I would stay with a similar type of fiber but since this is seasonal it's going to live on my table not get washed too often. I figured that's going to be just fine. As far as cottons go, my opinion, Lion Brand 24-7 is always a good option, especially for oh, home decor, certain projects, it's great. It has a nice texture to it on its own. It's smooth and it's going to give some body 
and a little bit of weight to lay really nicely on your surface. And they have so many colors, really saturated shades. <clears throat> and this is um, Goldenrod, Magenta, and Jade, in case you're curious. And you can take, you know, any other and maybe just kind of pop in another color to border or for contrasting also. This is an easy pattern. We do work post stitches that create these little boxes and you have colors from the following row going into your previous row and so on. Because we're crocheting two rows below, it drops the color down and just gives a really nice, unique look. All right and it's flat on the back. So the post stitches are only on the right side of the work and then the back side, I haven't sewn my tails in yet, but there you go. It's nice and smooth and flat. Today I'm working in the Tweed Indeed for demo purposes in two contrasting colors. So when we get to the border, it will be a lot easier for you to see the change. And I do recommend, you can try it yourself, going down one hook size from what the ball recommends. Maybe do a little swatch, see how spaced apart the stitches are, because that's going to vary on your own personal crocheting tension. But I wanted my stitches a little bit closer together and not so spaced apart. All right, go ahead and make your slip knot as usual. If you are working the more squared version, begin with a chain of 13. For a more traditional rectangular shape, go with a chain of 22 or 25. And that is in multiples of 3. So you chain 3, 3, 3, 3, plus 1. All right, so 4 times 3 is 12, plus 1 is 13, and so on. And if you want even a more extended rectangular version. If you have a more narrow surface you're putting that on. Oh, for example, a longer coffee table, I suggest a beginning chain of 31. So I'm going to work the chain of 13 and explain how to create the elongated version as we go. Now everyone, double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook and the first three skipped chains do count as your first double crochet. I suggest working in both the back loop of the chain and the third loop or the back bump. Go through those two loops because we're going to work quite a few stitches all into the same chain and that will help prevent that stitch from getting overstretched out that chain and that will also vary on how stretchy your yarn is or not. All right, so now we have two double crochets, the first three skip chains as the first. Now place one more double crochet into that same chain and now we're going to create our first corner with a chain two and now place three more double crochets all into that same chain. And now to create our second corner, chain two again. And now one more time, place three more double crochets into that same chain. Now to work the base of our rectangle. All right, everyone go ahead, skip the next two chains and be sure you don't overlook the chain right next to the one you worked all these stitches into, right next to that first chain we worked into, because working all of these stitches tend to shrink in the work to the left of it a little bit, so make sure you count this one little one that gets a little bit squished as your first chain. Skip the next, and then now place three double crochet in the next and this time only work in the back loop 
of the chain only. Okay. And again, repeat that, skip the next two chains, place three, double crochet into the next. That's my dog walking on the deck here. Alright, so for those of you who are working the more squared version, you will only have three stitches left. Alright, everyone else you will work additional sets of three double crochet like we just did all the way across until you have three chains left. Then now we will skip the next two chains and we're going to work our next two corners in the last. So again in the very last stitch work through the back loop and that third loop or back bump and begin with three double crochets all into that same chain. For the first corner now, chain two, place three more double crochets all into that chain. Okay, and again to finish the corner, chain two and place three more double crochets all into that same last chain of your row. Now to create, finish the first round, we need to stay on the right side. All of the work is done on the right side and continue now working along the other side of the chain. So you skip two chains and into the next which lands you right in the center double crochet. All right, now you place three double crochets into that chain. Okay. Skip the next two chains and again into the next which meets up with the center double crochet of the three. On the other side work three more double crochets. And if you're working the elongated rectangle, then you would repeat this sequence all the way to the end. And you should have two chains in between your last set and the corner. However, that first one does get tucked inside. So if you only see one chain, that's, that's a reason because this one gets squished in a little. So now just go ahead and slip stitch to the top of your beginning chain three. All right, the hardest part done. <laughs> That's the hardest part of this whole project, creating our beginning rectangle. And to begin round two, we need to slip stitch over to our chain two space. So now you're going to slip, slip stitch into each of the next two double crochets and then into the chain two space. And now to begin again, going to chain three, counts as our first double crochet here and throughout. And see, now we have two corners. So now for these corners, and this is how we're going to work every each of the four corners all the way throughout until we get to the border, place two more double crochets that's your first three, and chain two for the corner, and then place three more double crochets all into that chain two space. Skip over the next three double crochets and into the next corner. Now we're going to place three double crochets chain two for the corner and three more double crochets all into that chain two space. 
Right. There are your corners. Onward with round two. We are going to work in between the sets of three double crochets. So now on round two, we have three sets if you're working the squared version, and you will have more sets if you are working the more elongated version. All right, so skip over the next three double crochets, and in between the three you skipped and the next three, work three double crochets right in between. No chain spaces. That is only for our corners. Okay, and that's what you repeat across. You just skip over the next three double crochets and three double crochets in between. Okay, two, three, all right. One more time for the squared version. Skip the next three and place three double crochets in between your last set of three and the first three of your corner. Okay. And for our next corner, skip over the next three double crochets and work your corner. Three double crochets. chain two, three double crochets, worked all into that chain two space. Okay. Skip over the next three double crochets, and again in the chain two space, repeat with three double crochets. Chain two, three, more double crochets. And now for the other side of the rectangle to complete round two, you do just as we did as the first side and work three double crochets in between each set of three double crochets across, okay, and then we will connect to our corner and begin round three. Okay, so go ahead for each set of three double crochets, you work three double crochets in between. Okay, so you skip the next three double crochets, place three double crochets in between the three skipped and the next set of three. Repeat that across, and I will meet you at the end. At the end of round two, beginning round three, our last setup round for this pattern. Then we go into our repeats, and you will slip stitch now into the top of your beginning chain three of your first corner. Okay. And again, need to get over to that chain two space, so slip stitch into each of the next two double crochets, and make sure when you slip stitch, you don't make those tight. Keep them a little bit looser so they're nice full stitches and will be nice and flush across your work. All right, now slip stitch into your chain two space, and again, chain up three is your first double crochet. Place two more double crochets to complete the first set of three. Now to make your corner, chain two, and place three more double crochets. Skip the next three double crochet and three double crochet in between the space of the first skip three and your next set of three. And now, here we are at our next corner. So you work your three double crochets. Chain two, three, double crochets. Okay, 
Sorry if I was going too fast for some. It's usually too fast for some, too slow for others, so I try to keep it middle of the road here. Slow it down a little bit. But if you are a more seasoned crocheter, you can always speed up and then fast forward to where you need to be. Now, again, as we did on round two, go ahead and work across this side, placing three double crochets in between each set of three. And when you get to your corner, you work your three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, and along the shorter edge, as we did on the first corner, place three double crochets in between the set of three double crochets that make up each side of your corner. Then work your corner again, your last corner. Okay, as always, three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets, and then work just like you do across the other side with three double crochet in between each set of three. And I will meet you here and we'll reconnect and begin our pattern repeat. Now, if you are going to change colors, you can do that whatever sequence, however many rounds you like, create your own pattern with your own color changes if you like. I do suggest for sure to change on round four, which is our front post treble crochet round in the center stitch that we're going to work right now, the two rows below. And that's what gives this effect of the color changes going down into the stitches below and creates that, that really interesting, kind of really fun and neat look. And I'm going to continue in this solid color until I get to the border as mentioned, but I want to show you now how you would change those colors if you want to. So you would go ahead and slip stitch to the top of your beginning chain three, then slip stitch as we have been across each of the next two double crochets. And this is where you would then just yarn over, make a chain, cinch that down, fasten off. That Cut your yarn and that's where you'll have a tail to sew in. Okay. Then take your second color, make another slip knot, take your hook, insert it into the chain two space of that corner, bring your loop through, leave the knot to the back, and then we're going to work, continue with working our round, okay? And, and I'm going to show you that, but that's, that's just what you do to change color. But if you're not changing colors, then go ahead, slip stitch over into your chain two space as always, which I am going to do here. Slip stitch as always, to the top of your beginning, chain three, and slip stitch over into that chain two space, across the next two double crochets as we've been doing, and into that chain three space. Go ahead and chain three, work your next two double crochets, chain two and three double crochets all into that chain two space for that first corner. And now we get to change it up a little bit working some post stitches. If you don't care for post stitches, aren't comfortable with them, instead of working the post stitches, you can just continue with this pattern working three double crochets in between each set of three your corners the same, the three across, just as we did on round three. You can continue that throughout this entire pattern, and this is how your pattern will look, okay, up until the border, and everyone will work the border the same. For the pattern that I designed with the post stitches, we do the following. You skip the next three double crochet, as always, we're going to work in between those three sets beginning with one double crochet, and then now we're going to place a front post treble crochet around the center double crochet two rows below. That's how we get the effect. 
All right, so wrap your yarn around twice. And front post treble crochet. Around the center double crochet. So you skip the first, insert your hook. And front post treble crochet around that center double crochet. And then now work one more double crochet into that space between the skip stitches and your next. Okay, you see that space, nice big space to work into. And you, when you work those treble crochets, make sure you pull your loop up nice and tall so that everything is even and the same height across and that will prevent your work from scrunching down a little bit. Alright, so moving on, skip the next three and begin with your double crochet and then treble front post double crochet around the center double crochet two rows below. Again, pull that loop up. I think I got hung up there. There we go. I'll try it again. Now pull that loop up nice and tall to the height of your rest of your stitches. Complete your treble crochet and then double crochet into that same space between your sets of three. Double crochet. That brings us over to our corner stitch where you work your three double crochets. Chain two. Three double crochets. And then again all the way across the first side work as we did in between each set of three double crochet. Begin with one double crochet and then again your front post triple crochet around the center double crochet two rows below. Followed by one double crochet into that space between your sets of double crochet. And that is your repeat across this side. Work your corners as usual, three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, and then you will work the double crochet, treble crochet around the center post along this side in between each sets of three, your corner, and then again continue with the post stitch pattern all the way across the other side. I will meet you here and we will connect again as usual at the end of round four. Beginning around five now, okay, connect to the top of your chain three as always. So round five and six, super easy. It's just a repeat of round three. Okay, working the sets of three double crochet in between each set of three all the way around except for your corners always the same. So I'll get you started here. Slip stitch across into each of the next two double crochets as always and slip stitch into that chain two space. For your corners you do work your chain three, two double crochets, chain two, three double crochets, okay, and then now you just work your set of three double crochets in between each set of three all the way across, work your corners and your set of three double crochets in between each set all the way across and around. That is the same for rounds five and six. It's just your basic stitch we did at the beginning. Okay, so just carry on with your sets of three double crochet in between each set of three all the way around. 
and when you get to the end of this round five, you slip stitch as always to the top of your beginning chain three. Work your corner as usual and then just repeat round five. All right, so I will see you at the end of round six. Okay, so your repeats round four, five, and six. Round four, the front post treble crochet two rounds down, rows five and six, the sets of three double crochet around, except of course for our corners are always the same. You work that to your desired size with your last repeat of rounds four and five only. So you are ending with one round this time of the sets of three double crochet. I am back at the end of my last two rounds and now we're going to do the border. So if you are going to stay in the same color then go ahead and slip stitch over into your chain two space as usual. If you're going to change yarns then slip stitch to the top of the chain three, yarn over once, fasten off and that will be the end you sew in. Now to switch colors, go ahead and make a slip knot with your new yarn, insert your hook into any of the chain two corner spaces, bring your loop through leaving the knot to the back, all right, and then now we're going to chain four this time. All right, chain four. That knot to the back. And the chain four, your first three as your first double crochet plus a chain one. Now we are going to make another double crochet. Chain one, double crochet. All right, so for the corners you will have three double crochets with the chain one space in between. Now we're going to chain one for the center of the corner and for the other half of the corner you will double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one and double crochet all into that corner chain two space. That's what you will do for each corner. You will have three double crochets with one chain in between each, a chain one to separate each set, then followed by the double crochet chain one, double crochet chain one, double crochet. Okay, three double crochets on each side with two chains in between and your chain one separating the two sets. You skip over the next three double crochets and in the next space in between you place one single crochet. In the next space in between the sets you're going to work seven stitches. You will have four double crochets with one chain in between each. Four double crochets crochets and three chains in the next set. All right, so double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, and double crochet. All right, so you have four double crochets with your three chains totaling seven stitches. Okay, the next space between the sets of three double crochet you place your single and that is going to be your alternating stitches. A single followed by the set of seven double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, and double crochet. Your four doubles and your three chains followed by a single crochet. So you repeat that sequence to the end. I'll work one more corner with you and then that's what you will repeat all the way around. Now when you come up 
stitch the last space in between your last set of three and your corner stitch. You might wind up placing either a single crochet or your set of seven. That is okay. Doesn't matter. You keep working around. Work your corner as usual. And then your next stitch after the corner will be a single crochet followed by the set of seven single crochet seven. You just work that sequence around. Okay. At my next corner, and that is going to be a double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So in the corners, you will have five stitches for each set of the corner. Three double crochets with the chain in between and then one chain separating the two sets and then for your second set you will do your five stitches of a double crochet chain one double crochet chain one double crochet so in the corners you have your two sets of five with the chain one space and along each side then you will begin with a single crochet in the next space between your sets of three doubles followed by your set of seven stitches. The four double crochets with the chain one in between. Alright, so go ahead and repeat this around and I will see you connect at the beginning to finish our final round two of our border. I'm back at the end of the first round of our border and now for our second and final round. Here you have, remember you did four chains at the beginning so we want to slip stitch to the top of the third chain up. We're going to work into that chain one space. So don't accidentally slip stitch into that fourth chain. Alright, so go through the both loops as always. Top loops of your chain. And then now slip stitch into that chain one space and we're going to begin with the chain one and then single crochet into that same chain one space and then now chain three and place another single crochet into that same chain one space. And now we're going to skip this double crochet and we're going to work into the chain one space only again with a single crochet, chain three, single crochet and we're going to work into this chain one spaces only including the chain one space that separated the two sets of the corner. So that's where we are now. Just treat that as all the other chain one spaces with the single crochet, chain three, single crochet. Alright, and again chain one space, work a single crochet, chain three, single crochet and in the last chain one space. Now we're turning the corner and you're going to work the same in the single crochet. So in that single crochet place a single crochet, chain three and a single crochet. And you are at the next set of your scallops. Now with your four double crochet and your three chains. So you skip the first double crochet, work into the first chain one space as you did in the corner, single crochet, chain three, single crochet into the chain one space, skipping each double crochet, working into the chain one spaces only. And that is all there is to the final round. So into every set of seven, we'll call these the scallops, on each edge, the short edges and the long edges, you will have three chain one spaces and on the corners you will have two on each side plus the one in the center. 
So you work your single crochet, chain three, single crochet into every chain one space and every single crochet all the way around. Every chain one space, every single crochet all the way around. And when you come back around, all you do is slip stitch into the top of your beginning single crochet, cut your yarn, sew in your ends, and you are done. All right, whoo, sun's going down behind the trees and it is getting chilly out here as soon as it does over because that wind is reminding me, oh yes indeed, it is still fall after all and it gets chilly to the bone. And depending on the yarn you used, you may or may not need to do a light blocking of that. Uh, this yarn, because it's smooth and it tends to lay flat by itself and it's not real lofty and springy and bouncy like this piece that I made, you may not have to do any blocking at all. This piece I did because of the yarn is real bouncy and, and it tends to want to spring back onto itself, but all it needed was just a really light. Just with some warm water, I spritzed around, I smoothed it out with my hand, made sure it was real squared off all the way. I mean, all the edges were even and, and the posts were um, even. I could just look. I used the post stitches kind of as a guide to make sure they weren't squished down. And I just let that air dry as is and it came out just fine as you could see on the table. And, and if you do that, I liked my scalloped bits, these little um, edges here, a little bit ruffly. So when you smooth them, if you like having that little ruffle a little bit, then just be real gentle with that. I would work more the edge up to it and just be gentle with the end so that way you don't smash them flat unless you want the look where they're just more smooth and spread out. You can do that too. Well, I had a good time with this. I hope you had fun making it or will make it. Let me know, please. Thanks so much as always for being here. I appreciate you all so much spending your time with me, watching my videos and making my little patterns. Well, take good care, my fiber friends. Have a beautiful rest of your day or evening. Be safe out there. Be kind and love one another. All right, I'll see you again in the next episode. Bye-bye for now.